everybody. Could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. New genetic research may have revealed the driving force behind the evolution of life at its most fundamental level. A study led by researchers in Denmark and the U.S. and just published in the Journal of Theoretical Biology offers an alternative to the gene-centered view of evolution that was introduced by George C. Williams in the 1960s and popularized by Richard Dawkins a decade later in his book The Selfish Gene. That view of evolution is based on the premise that DNA has a natural tendency to self-replicate. The key claim of this new research is that DNA's resting position isn't conducive to replication and that it's actually ribosomes which are driven to replicate themselves. According to this theory, DNA, in its tightly coiled resting position, serves as a sort of library of assembly instructions for RNA, of which ribosomes are built. This is all open for debate, of course. Many biologists reject the gene-centered view of evolution, and it's likely this selfish ribosome view will not gain universal acceptance anytime soon either. But it does narrow the theoretical gap between non-living biological molecules and the simplest single-celled organisms. And it proves that although evolution is a fact, our understanding of it is far from complete. Next up, researchers from Europe and the U.S. have discovered a new antibiotic that eliminates pathogens without resistance. The new antibiotic is called Tyxobactin. It was discovered thanks to a process developed by the research team for growing uncultured bacteria, a potentially invaluable resource for developing new antibiotics. When the researchers tested Tyxobactin against MRSA and tuberculosis, they found that the bacteria showed no signs of resistance and that the antibiotic was able to block multiple targets on the bacteria. There's still a lot of work to be done before Tyxobactin reaches the drug stage, and it's possible pathogens that are resistant to it will be discovered. But the researchers are hopeful this discovery will lead to others and that a new generation of resistance light antibiotics is on the way. This research is published in the journal Nature. And finally, analysis of data collected by NASA's Kepler mission has led to the confirmation of eight new extrasolar planets orbiting in the habitable zones of their stars, including the two most Earth-like exoplanets yet found. The discovery of these eight new planets was announced last week by the American Astronomical Society and is also the subject of a paper published in the Astrophysical Journal. The two most Earth-like planets are designated Kepler 438b and Kepler 442b. They both orbit red dwarf stars and have years much shorter than ours, 35 days for 438b and 112 days for 442b. Kepler 438b is a distance of 470 light years from Earth, and Kepler 442b is 1100 light years from Earth. Both planets are slightly larger than Earth and are estimated to receive less light from their suns. Nonetheless, they orbit within the so-called Goldilocks zones of their respective solar systems and are described as promising candidates for habitability. I find that to be exciting news, but not as exciting as how quickly these exoplanets continue to pile up. The universe is far more abundant with Earth-like worlds than we could have dared to imagine even 20 years ago. A new theory suggests that evolution is driven by the selfish ribosome, a newly discovered antibiotic destroys infections without resistance, and eight new planets are discovered orbiting stars other than the sun, bringing the grand total of exoplanets to 1,876. For now. That's the good news. Yes, it is. So when are we going to shoot our spoof of Elastic Heart? I'm waiting for an answer. <laughs>